Christopher Columbus arrived in Cuba just over 500 years ago and pronounced that this land was the most beautiful land human eyes had ever seen. If you come to Cuba today, you might also think the same thing. In fact, Cuba may be the only area in the entire Caribbean that Columbus would recognize today. This is part of a much larger archipelago called Canareas, and it's almost as long as the Florida Keys. We're in an isolated lagoon surrounded by frigate birds in a mangrove forest on an uninhabited key. And this is a perfect example of an ecosystem imbalance. The fish populations here are incredibly abundant, like nothing I've seen anywhere in the United States. There are large Kubera snapper swimming among the root systems here, and just scores and scores of baby grunts and baby snappers. It's really impressive. dark area of the water is seagrass. And in, in Florida and other places where tourism is being developed, seagrass is the first thing to go. Which is too bad because seagrass is very important for the youngest fish and larva of fish that eventually get carried by the currents up as far as the uh, east coast of North Carolina. So what starts here feeds our fisheries in the United States. So we all have an interest in protecting the southern coast of Cuba. Look at this guy. He's about a three and a half, maybe four foot long iguana here on the former seabed of the Gulf of Batabano. The biodiversity here is, is unparalleled and just a, a very high level of endemism, the highest in the region actually. And these animals, here comes another one, look at them, wow. This is a baby, this is only about a foot and a half. But they're everywhere on this island, everywhere you look. This is one of the most important turtle nesting sites in the entire region. There are five species of endangered sea turtle and most of them make their nest here in the summertime. This area is set apart from human developments. There are no lights here. It's very important for sea turtles to have a completely dark beach. The Environmental Defense Fund has been working with Cuban partners, with Cuban scientists, marine biologists, and park managers to develop a network of protected areas all along the southern coast that are connected so that we can preserve the biodiverse coral reef systems for future generations. Not that long ago, this entire area was dunes and no development. Now, we find it at the center of the tourism development, which is the economic engine for Cuba. Cuba's tourism industry has been growing at a rate of about 10% per year and faces even more pressure to grow at a faster rate to help spur economic development. The Cubans have every opportunity to have a brand different than any other Caribbean nation. They are at that point where they make decisions that will either separate themselves and distinguish themselves in terms of the clientele they attract, or they will go down the same path as Cancun and the Bahamas and other overdeveloped, resource-degraded resorts. Yo pienso que en un futuro podemos conservar la, nuestro archipiélago. Podemos conservarlo porque lo estamos, aunque venga más turistas, nosotros lo protegemos cada día más. Cayo Largo is a real success story. And in the coming years, as the, the, the pressures are greater to develop the area, we think there's a model for getting it right. The Environmental Defense Fund hopes to be part of that and work with our our Cuban partners here in the future to make sure that years from now Cuba continues to be a magical place and the biological treasure house of the Caribbean 